I'm going to give you an option. Slowly lose your mind as a parasitic fungus spreads throughout your body, overtaking your motor controls and making you attack other humans as you watch in horror. Sounds awful? Okay. Here's option two. Slowly lose your mind as a monster infiltrates your psyche, urging you to feed on other people in exchange for supernatural powers, all the while tormenting you as you watch your own carnage fully conscious and helpless. Yeah, apocalypses are the worst. Today, we're comparing the apocalyptic environments of The Last of Us and Homesick and seeing who from The Last of Us might survive in the Homesick universe. But don't worry, there'll be no spoilers for this series, we're only going to reveal necessary details to explain our rankings. And we're basing this off of The Last of Us TV show, not the game, so I don't want to hear anything about spores. Unless you've been living under a rock, doomsday prepping, you've probably heard of The Last of Us. The video game turned TV show where a rampant fungus turns people into man-eating monsters and one man with a particular set of skills must transport a girl named Ellie across the country to a medical research base when it's discovered she's immune to the infection. On their journey, they run into various survivors who have all coped with the aftermath of societal collapse in either wholesome or gruesome ways. The apocalyptic setting of The Last of Us is remarkably similar to that of the webtoon series Homesick. Instead of mushrooms, an unknown infection turns people into monsters called mercs. Unlike with cordyceps, infected people in Homesick sick can communicate with the monsters inside of them, which is so creepy. But like the cordyceps, mercs are in control. They lure you in, offering to share their supernatural powers with you, then take over and do what they want, which is usually eating people. At least in homesick, infected people can't pass on their infection. Thank goodness. In Homesick, the main protagonist, Rain, is secretly infected, but like Ellie, she's a special case. Her Merc is strangely rational and empathetic. He's committed to protecting Rain and lends her his powers whenever she's in danger. So she hides his existence and teams up with this moody guy named Samuel, and they travel together cross-country, running into other survivors who may have intentions more wicked than the monsters. That's another common thread in these series. The real dangers aren't necessarily the monsters, but the other survivors. Oh, uh, these are the kinds of series that give you trust issues, because every time a new character shows up, you're instantly on your guard, but you're secretly hoping they'll be nice because your heart just can't take another betrayal. To quote directly from The Last of Us, the only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. What would it take to survive the homesick apocalypse? Characters from The Last of Us are used to chaos coming from all directions, so we're gonna see how well they'd fare in homesick using these criteria. First is mental fortitude. A score of one means like you completely lost your mind, and a score of five means you're totally zen. Next is combat ability. A score of one means you are a threat to yourself, and a score of five means you should probably star in a shonen anime. Next is charisma. A score of one means dogs don't even like you, and a score of five means you could probably command the clouds to rain. Resourcefulness. A score of one means you're all problems and no solving, and a score of five means you could probably restart the energy grid with potatoes. And then lastly, we want to evaluate their likelihood of fighting off infection, where a score of one would mean they're a total puppet, and a score of five means they're in control of the Merc. Based on our complex mathematical formula, if you score higher than 20, you survive. And depending on which homesick character they're most similar to, we'll give them plus one bonus point if we like that character, or minus a bonus point if we don't like them. Okay, so first we have Joel. He's about as invincible as a person can be during the apocalypse. I would relate Joel most closely to the homesick character, Samuel. He's standoffish and lovably grumpy. Also, he fights with a baseball bat like a badass. He's not very emotional, but he does care a lot about his friends, and he loves his cat, Ogre. He also privately grapples with past trauma and depression very similar to Joel's. So using our criteria, we'll start with mental fortitude. Joel definitely has strong mental fortitude, but it's also a little shaky due to self-doubt issues and some horrific past trauma. But if he's got a clear goal ahead of him, he'll fight through the fog. So we'll give him a four. Next, Joel's combat ability. 10 out of 10, his bare hands would be enough, but he could also pick up any object and make it a weapon. So he gets a five. Next is charisma. Just like Samuel, he's a little rough around the edges, like they both kind of have an a-hole voice, but they get stuff done, so people respect them for their leadership and abilities. So we'll say three. Now resourcefulness. <laughs> the man's very resourceful, like he basically ran a whole trading empire, so we'll give him a five and an employee of the month award. Now if he did get infected, how likely would he be able to tame his Merc? Because Mercs prey on your desires and weaknesses, I actually think Joel would not fight his infection. He's haunted by the trauma of his lost daughter, and I think if a monster came and offered him invincibility, he would take it to protect the people he cares about. But he's also got a strong mental fortitude, so he could probably hold off the monster from completely taking over his mind. So we'll give him a three. So that gives Joel a total of 20 points, and because we like Samuel, that gives him one bonus point, giving him a total score of 21. So Joel survives! Did we make this ranking too hard? Well, it is the apocalypse. So next, we have Ellie. 
Ellie is most similar to Rain, the main character of Homesick, who is also an apocalypse anomaly. Due to their infections, they're both major assets to humanity. Rain's also really tough, loyal, and doesn't bow down to anyone. So Ellie's mental fortitude. Ellie's is very strong. Even when bad things happen, she's able to pick up and move on, so we'll give her a five. As for combat, she definitely wants to beat up anyone who gets in her way. I mean, in Homesick, she is gonna be fighting infected people with superpowers. I think she's stealthy and clever enough to survive, so we'll give her a four. Charisma. Ellie has a lot of confidence, but she's also dismissed by adults for being a kid, so we'll say two. Next is resourcefulness. Ellie's a quick learner and very observant, which is crucial to surviving in homesick, and she'll only get more capable as she ages, so we'll say four. And how likely would she fight infection? Here's the thing about Ellie. She's immune to cordyceps. She is not immune to every unidentified pathogen out there, so her one advantage really has no bearing here. And Ellie's tough, but she's also scared of ending up alone, so a merc offering companionship and powers might be the perfect trap. While the beast might overtake her body, if she maintains her sanity, she might be able to interfere with some of the monsters functioning. We see this kind of internal conflict happen in Homesick between a child and this merc, so we'll give Ellie a three. So that gives Ellie an 18, and because we like Rain, that gives her one extra bonus point for a total score of 19. So she's so close, but she does not survive. Oh dear. Well, if the apocalypse won't get me, fans of the show certainly will. Moving on. Our next character is Tess. She's got a lot in common with homesick character Kenny. Like, Tess is tough on the outside, but secretly has a huge heart. Kenny is Sam L's estranged cousin who broke out of jail when the apocalypse hit. Though it seems like he hangs out with a bad crowd, he has a really beautiful character arc and a heart-wrenching backstory, so it's really hard to hate him. Tess has seen a lot of tragedy, but she never lets it bog her down. And even when she's in danger or somebody's wronged her, she's really level-headed, so we'll give her a five. Now, combat. Tess is good with weapons and has a lot of experience fighting rival groups and monsters, so four. Now Charisma. Tess has done some shady things to survive, very much like Kenny, but they are honest about it. They just move on and get stuff done, which gives them a reputation for being reliable and powerful. So we'll give her a four. As for resourcefulness, just like Joel, she survived by buying and trading goods, so she gets high points, five. And now how well would she fight infection? With Tess's incredible grit, if she got infected, I think she would be able to negotiate with the monster for power and control. Many people who get infected are blinded by a desire for power, but Tess wouldn't fall for it, so we'll give her a four. That gives Tess a score of 22, and because we like Kenny, she gets one extra bonus point for a score of 23. She survives! And if you think I was being a little generous with her scoring, well, you can fight me. She's gonna live. Next character is Bill. Yeah, there's no apocalypse Nick Offerman would not survive, so we're just gonna move on. Now let's talk about Henry. Henry sold out the leader of a revolution to obtain medicine for his sick little brother, Sam. He's not naturally violent and wrestles with guilt from harming others. He's similar to homesick fan favorite Naveen. Naveen is a breath of fresh air in the apocalypse. He's so optimistic and caring, and he uplifts people's spirits, and he risks his own safety to protect them. So Henry's mental fortitude. He's strengthened by determination to protect his brother, but a lot of internal guilt is slowly eroding him from within. We'll give him a four. Next, we have combat. He's never killed anyone and prefers to use a gun as a bluff versus a weapon, but he's not completely defenseless, so we'll give him a three. Now for charisma. Henry is definitely better with his words than his fists because he convinces Joel to smuggle him and his brother out of the city, but he gives us a kind of nervous and skittish energy, so we'll give him a four. For resourcefulness, well, Henry has shown that he can obtain rare goods, and he comes with a unique plan for escaping the city, so We'll give him a five. And now how likely would he fight infection? Ugh, I think a merc would exploit his guilt, promising to soothe his pain and give him power to protect his brother, so we'll give him a two. That's an 18 for Henry, and because we love Naveen, that gives him an extra bonus point for a score of 19, but unfortunately, that is not enough for him to survive. All right, here's a controversial character. We have David the Preacher and leader of a small cult, I mean, community of survivors. He's like a mix of two characters from Homesick, Mateo and Gressel. He presents himself as a gentle and moral man, but later events reveal otherwise. Mateo is also the leader of a ragtag group of thugs and high schoolers. He has a mysterious and lethal aura that demands obedience. Gressel is his unhinged right-hand man who likes to push people's buttons and play chicken with mercs. He also might have a small masochistic kink that just like, you know, yeah, he's confusing. I don't want to talk about him anymore. So David's mental fortitude. 
it's not strong. Like, he puts on a good show, but his mind is cracked. One. As for combat, David will hurt people to survive, but before he was a preacher, he was a teacher, and neither of those roles really train you for combat, so we'll say two. Now, for Charisma, he did manage to lead and gaslight a whole cult, I mean, a community, um, but some of his followers are losing faith, so we'll give him a four. Now for resourcefulness. One might argue if he was more resourceful, he would have found a better way to feed his starving cult community. And that's all I'll say about that. Three, how likely would he fight infection? If David was infected, he'd totally become a monster, and he'd probably convert the rest of his cult community into becoming monsters too. So that's a negative one. He gets a score of 9, and I personally do not like Mateo or Gressel, so that's negative 2 bonus points, giving him a score of 7. That's rough, buddy. We have our final character from The Last of Us, the Giraffe. For mental fortitude, the Giraffe seems very zen. He just goes with the flow. That's aspirational. 5 points. Combat-wise, I mean he's 6 feet tall, and what else do you use 4 legs for? Five points. Charisma. Everyone loves the giraffe. How could you not? Five points. As for resourcefulness, the giraffe has been surviving in the wild since it was born. Five points. And how likely would it fight infection? To be honest, the giraffe is not a great candidate for infection because it doesn't have the anatomy to eat meat and mercs just want to eat people. So I think that's five points. And the giraffe gets an impressive score of 25 points. Also, he reminds me of Ogre from Homesick, the best animal friend ever, so that's 26 points. This giraffe is not only surviving, he is thriving. Obviously, this is a joke, guys, but these series are both so heavy, I just kinda needed that one for me. <gasps> and so that's our official analysis of who in The Last of Us would survive in Homesick. So what do you think? Are you pleased, angry, infected? Leave it in the comments. Also, if you love a good apocalypse story, make sure to check out these series and let us know what other crossovers we should do next. See you next time.